Hey, my name is Jan Ketil Röd and I will in this video talk about buffers. Buffer is a basic vector operation and this is the second video about such vector operations. Most of the content is taken from chapter 8 in the Norwegian textbook GIS Tools to Understand the World. So in the video I will talk about buffers performed on all the three geometries that we have for vector data. Buffer on points, buffer on lines and buffer on polygons. I will also give some examples of applications of buffers. Maybe you have heard about these already and some other cool types of buffer. And I provide some examples also from the tools, uh, which is then mainly performed using the QGIS software. So you can perform buffer on point, line and polygon feature, but the output is always a polygon feature. So no matter what the input geometry is, the output, the resulting feature class or the shapefile is always a polygon feature. So by default, when you buffer point objects, these will come with equal buffer distance for all objects. So you set the distance and you choose often then the units of distance, which could be meter, kilometers or whatever. And for points, the default buffer form will then be circles, thus the distance here would be then the radius of the buffer. The buffer distances do not have to be same for all objects. You can have them unique or at least vary a lot from point to point. And then instead of setting one distance for all objects, you need to have a feel having values for the individual buffer distances for the input objects. So one example of this is what we did many years ago on conflicts around the world, armed conflicts. We had a database on, on all the conflicts and we geocoded them with the latitude longitude. And we also gave a radius value representing the geographical extensions of the armed conflict. Thus here we had what we need for a varying buffer distance, a field in the attribute table, which we can use then to vary the buffer distance for the objects. So this was how it looked in the map. We had all these central points for the armed conflicts for the different years and a radius value showing down the extensions of it. And here we only show the point and point, if you have that as an input for a buffer operation, you can generate then polygons of it. But in this situation, we just not wanted the circular shape, we wanted the circular shape to be cut along the state boundary. And then the, the transformation from the point object to a buffer or a geographical extensions of this point became a little bit more complicated. But buffer was one of the key ingredients to perform this transformation. And then the result for one year would look like this. We had done the geographical extensions of the armed conflicts going on in Colombia and many uh, other places in the world. Of course, depending on the buffer distances, you may have a result where the buffer is overlapping. So the buffer for each of the objects are so large that they are touching each other or even overlapping each other. And then you may have to take a decision. Do you want the result to be like a unique overlapping buffer of polygons? For instance, for the armed conflict uh, example, this would then result in various conflict polygons being represented as overlapping polygons. Or do you want to have them fused together so that you, for each country, for instance, have one representation, one geographic extensions of the conflict in that country. If you want the latter, what is invoked is then a dissolve operation. And dissolve is a tool in its own, and it is a generalization process, very often used to group objects together. That could, for instance, be municipalities, 
which is then belonging to one county and you may then group them based on one common number in a field and the result is then also where you are removing the boundary between those objects which are sharing this quality. One thing to be aware of if you are running buffer with dissolve on a huge data set is that it may take a long time. And this is then illustrated here why this is so, because you have several of these points and they all create one buffer polygon, one circle, and when you need to dissolve these polygons, you need to remove all the common boundaries or the boundaries between them. And this is just a mess. So many intersections of so many lines. So of course, GIS, any GIS would require a lot of time to do all this processing. Now we can also, of course, buffer linear features. And this is just one example where you have equal buffer length of the objects, but this may also change just as we had for points. And here we show some river where different segments of the river are buffered differently. For instance, because these are streams and they are represented as line, but nevertheless, they may have different width. So they may be half a meter, one meter or two meter, and this is then stored as an attribute value, and you can use this then to create buffer with different buffer distances. Then also for linear features, you may have a parameter set to determine how you would have the end of the buffer. So should it be rounded, which is the default, or should it be a flat buffer? Or you may also, in QGIS, have the option to have it squared. So many, many options here. Um, I haven't seen many examples of why you should have a flat or a squared um, and of a buffer, but I'm sure there are. So what you may remember from representation is that a line is always starting in one node and ending in another node. And thus all lines has a direction. And thereby also they have a left hand side and they have a right hand side. In many GIS then you can have single sided buffer. And in QGIS, this is a specific tool where then the buffer is computed on only the left or the right hand side of the linear feature. So I tried this once um, because in Norway we have this regulation that you are not allowed to have development within the 100 meter belt from the coastline. So this should be open free spaces for everyone. So, but in order to generate this one-sided buffer representing a 100 meter belt, I had this error here because different segments had different directions. So for the segment of the coast here, right hand buffer became onshore, but the next segment here, the 100 meter belt come offshore because here the direction of the line was different. And then again, next segment, it was correct onshore. Again. So if the geometry in your input linear feature is wrong, running the one-sided buffer will also create a wrong buffer. Now for polygon buffer, just as you have for linear feature, you can set a parameter on what kind of style you want. The default is the rounded version, but you can have also what is called meter and bevel. And for the meter, you can set the parameter on how far out the buffered polygon would reach. Also for polygon, only for polygon feature, because these are areas already, you can have what we call a negative buffer. And opposed to positive buffer, which expands the object, a negative buffer would shrink an object. So you can think of this as eroding away or something which is shrinking. So this is achieved by just entering a negative buffer distance instead of a positive one. And this is just an effect done with one 
minus 1 or minus 2 meter. This is then shrinking an object here, as shown in the illustration. One application of the buffer operation is the generation of the data set called enon or the wilderness-like areas in Norway. This is now done by the environmental agency in Norway and um, they update this I think every five years but they have also made this data set showing how the situation were dating back and the series of map here shows a very serious decline in wilderness like areas in Norway and the data set is basically generated based on buffering so they collect data on public roads and railways forest roads tractor path etc if they are longer than 50 meters power line reservoirs etc many layers of infrastructure development and they take a one kilometer buffers away from these major technical constructions and then they do two other buffers of three kilometers and five kilometers distance and then creating two zones one zones close to the major infrastructure development zone which is then one to three kilometer and the one being further away from the major development and then finally what is outside five kilometer from all this development is what they call wilderness like areas of course there has been some critique towards this data set because the cartographic representation equals one kilometer in smooth terrain with one kilometer in very rough terrain because this is a buffer which do not take any consideration about altitude variation whereas the human conceptions is different you may be closer to a technical infrastructure than one kilometer but still have the impression or the perception that you are in a wilderness like area and the opposite might also be true that you are further away than five kilometer and you may still see and feel impacted by these technical infrastructure developments so this is a critique of the Enon data set that it may not always correspond well with our human conception Nevertheless, it's a very straightforward, easy way of uh, representing a wilderness like area. Another data set that are generated based on buffer operation is Statistics Norway's data set of densely populated area. And a little bit simplification, but the basic tool here is that they have used a 50 meter buffer from all buildings in Norway. So wherever people live or where they work are then representing a densely populated area because these polygons are then fused together and represent a populated area. So I've gone through now the major kinds of buffers on point lines and polygon, but there are other kinds of buffer and some of them really cool. We have multi-ring buffer, we have different buffer shapes that you can create and we have what is called tapered buffers and variable width buffers. We have the multi-ring buffer, which is QGIS is a different tool for this. And then you can have like different intervals of equal buffer distances. So to determine in what distance interval are you from the object of interest, being a line, point or a polygon. And Although the default form or the default shape of a point buffer is a circle, you may also have these as rectangles, ovals, diamonds. And you can choose between the shape of this and you can set the width, the height and even the rotation of this shape. So here for point buffers you have many different options. Then you also have what we call tapered buffers for linear feature. You set a start width and an end width. And then in between, the tool then interpolate the buffer length. And a bit more sophisticated variant of this is a variable width buffer, 
where the buffer width is then varied by the M value. And the M value is then something which is part of the geometry of the linear feature. You may know that a line consists of many vertices, and in these vertices, of course, you have the X and the Y value. You may also have a set value showing the altitude, and you may have an M value, where M is short for measure. And the measure could be then the width of the river or the width of the flood zone, for instance, and you could then buffer the line here based on then the M value, which is stored with the vertex. So also a cool thing. And this was then also the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.